heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask the Lord, the thing I seek the most, <laughs> is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Delighting in the Lord's perfections, meditating in His temple, for He will conceal me there when trouble comes. He will hide me in His sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me, at his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful. Answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path where my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence, and yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous, yes. Wait patiently for the Lord. Amen. I mean, what, a, what, a, what an incredible, what, what a great psalm. What a... What a thing to do today. I was thinking, uh, Pastor Eric was preaching Bible study this morning in the Sunday school class about that original sin and how God came and said, Where are you? I want to talk with you. And David says, the Lord says again, I want to talk with you. And David responds, Lord... <laughs> Here I come. God wants to talk with us today. Can you respond? Here I come. Here I come. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together in your presence. God, the praises. You, Lord, are working miracles in the lives of your people. And Lord, we are grateful, we are thankful, we are, we are so honored that you would care about us, that you would love us, that you would be patient with us, that you would forgive our sins. And so God, I thank you for a body who cares about one another, a body who says, we love you, Lord, with all of our hearts. And because of that, we will treat people as you have asked us to treat people, that we would put others above ourselves. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you have responded in such a wonderful way, and, and we just keep hearing how you are working in the lives of people. And so, Lord, we give you praise for that. I thank you that uh, uh, Kim and Mark are able to get some time away. Help them, Lord, to have a beautiful vacation to rest and relax in your presence, to be able to just take a break uh, from all of the things that they are experiencing in life and just to, just to have some downtime. I thank you that uh, Tom and Debbie are able to get a little bit of time away and just, and just relax and just uh, take a breath. Lord, we, we pray for these who are going through some difficult times. Lord. Uh, I pray that uh, things would open up for Roger, that he would be able to figure out what's, what's going on uh, with, with his health and, and how he is, uh, just has no energy. Uh, Lord, we, 
we do uh, pray for Gail's, uh, her sister-in-law's son. Just repeated, repeated surgery. Lord, I know how that feels and going through that with family members. And, and uh, God, I thank you that as if they rely upon you, that you can be there with them through every step of the way and just uh, hold them in your arms. Lord, we do, we do pray for Jesse. Lord, I don't know uh, what your will is for his life, but Lord, if there is a healing there, a miracle work that you can do in his life and, and he would glorify you and give you the credit through it, Lord, I pray that you would do that, that you would touch him. Uh, Lord, we, we do uh, pray for, for Karen and uh, that you would uh, uh, just be the focus of, of her life. And Lord, we pray for Jason that, that treatment would come, would, that they would uh, not just do a Band-Aid approach, but God, that they would, they would provide treatment that would be lasting and, and life-changing. Pray, Lord, that uh, you would strengthen Doug for the surgery that he needs, or, or, Lord, you can just heal him and he won't need the surgery. What, whatever is your will, God, we ask for your will in, in Doug's life there. And, uh, and for Mike Eugenia, Lord, that uh, you would uh, provide the treatment that he needs, the healing touch. Lord, we pray for Gail with the loss of her husband and now just the confusion of property and those kinds of things and the expense. God... Uh, guide her and lead her through that, provide what she needs as she goes through this time. And also, Lord, we pray for Larry's friend, that uh, and we thank you, as we've heard even this morning, for uh, a new soul in your kingdom. Lord, whatever methods you need to use, we thank you. You use so many different methods to draw people to you, and for that we give you thanks and praise. And now, Lord, as we, as we sing together, Lord, it is such an honor to come into your presence, shouting, singing songs of joy, and lifting you up with our hearts. We give this to you. We give this time to you, our worship, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who am I but the highest king would tell? I was lost, but he brought me in for his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me for his grace was deep. While our life was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Who the sun says. In my father's house, 
there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you Yes, I am who you say I am. If the sun sets free, oh, it's free in me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Praise you, God. Thank you. No better feeling today than to be recognized as his child. Yes, amen. And loved by someone such as he. Yes, amen. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Into the darkness you shine out of the ashes you rise there's no one like you none like you our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is for us, what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Thank you. 
Oh, I got a little lost there. <laughs> Our God is an awesome God, an amazing king, not just a, not just a, a God, but a God, a king, a savior, and someone who forgives each and every one of our faults, picks us back up, strengthens us. Sets us back on our way. Just an amazing Lord. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. But I'm alive and well. Your spirit within me because you died and rose again once more I'm forgiven I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm forgiven you were condemned but I'm alive and well spirit is because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? You, my king, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be? You, my king, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you We proclaim it, Lord. Says you are my king. Amazing love, how can it be? You, my king, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it. Amazing love, how can it be? You, my king, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do, in all I do, I honor you. Amen. We honor you, Lord. You know that while we walk in sin, we are a slave to that sin. But Jesus came. Forgive us 
of all those sins, accepted us to walk beside him, and we are no longer slaves to that sin. Thank you for your freedom, Lord. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called. been born again to your family your blood flows through my veins Saint Church I'm no longer a slave to fear what are you? I am a child of God I'm no So I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. Once more. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. Be your child, Lord. Thank you, God. I'm free. Child. Just to be your child, Lord, and to walk beside you. Yes. But I find, Lord, when I walk beside you, I grow a strength in my need for you. Mm -hmm. My reliance upon you increases, Lord. Yes. I find myself needing you more today than I did yesterday. Yes. 
And I know tomorrow, Lord, I will need you even more. I need you more, more than yesterday, I need you more, more than words can say, I need you more than ever before, I need you Lord, I need you Lord, cry out to the Lord. Sometimes, Lord, we look at the evil in the world and we begin to wring our hands and fret and worry. And, Lord, those are not things that you desire for your children. God, you desire for us to understand that you are sovereign, that you are in control, and that we are just to reflect you into this world. So, Lord, we do need you today. We need you to take those burdens of worry and stress and pain from our lives and polish us into something that shines your light into the world in which we live. And Lord, we understand that polishing can be painful. And that is a lifelong process. But God, we lay ourselves out before you to be used as instruments in your hand. And we consider it a privilege that you would use us as instruments for the redemption of your people and your world. Lord, there are a lot of people hurting today. And yes, we are even hurting here in Kings, Kent, Fresno counties and Tulare County with uh, the ravages of this virus that's going around. And Lord, I, I pray for your people, the church, that as we 
handle what we say and what we do, that we would be truthful, but we would be truthful in love. Lord, give us hearts of compassion for people with whom we talk and have interaction. And let us see them through your eyes instead of our own agendas. God, we pray for this state. I pray for the election that's coming up this week. God, I pray that you would have your way. God, you would minister uh, through your people's actions even as we have the freedom to carry our ballots to the ballot box. But Lord, we, we think of people who are even in more dire straits. Lord, can I think of you know, earthquake and hurricane damage in Haiti again, once again. People in Louisiana once again uh, ravaged by floods. Uh, people who are starving around this world because of a uh, lack of water in places that grow the food. And so, God, we ask for your divine intervention through the church, through your people, and into the hearts and lives of those who are ministered to. Lord, I pray ahead of time for our food distribution this weekend that you would send people who need to see your love in action that you would work in our hearts and, and our actions as we deliver food and hand it to people, that they would see that it is not us but you who are providing. And God, may we be a witness into this community that cannot be denied. Lord, uh, as we listen to your word today, open up our hearts and our minds. And, and Lord, if, if this is something that uh, you have sent someone here or online today to hear this very word, I pray, Lord, that you would use it to change lives, that, God, it would have an eternal purpose and a plan because of what you have said. And for that, Lord, we give you thanks and praise in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. The usher's coming. We'll receive this morning's tithes and offerings. <laughs> That's Greg's favorite song, song today, right? Is that, Greg, you got the Saints playing today, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, turn in your Bibles to uh, First Kings, okay? Thank you there, worship band. Appreciate that music. So, um, uh, 
As you're, as you're getting there to 1 Kings chapter 18, let me say something that I think is really important to God. Okay? Above anything else in our lives, God's desire is to have our whole heart. Okay? To have, uh, to have our worship. To have our focus. To have our adoration. And so God wants to be number one in our hearts and lives. Uh, in fact, you know, what's, what's the first of the Ten Commandments? You shall have no other gods before me, right? So, and, and when Jesus was asked, well, what's, what's the greatest commandment that there is? Jesus said, you know, above all else, you need to love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay? So God wants all of our hearts, not just a, not just a piece, not just a little of our heart. God wants all of our hearts, and, and that, that leads me to a, to a second thought. And there, there's a good reason, if you were Satan, okay, then there's a good reason, if you're the spiritual enemy of God, what would you try to do then, if God wants all of our hearts, what would you try to do if you were Satan to just frustrate God? To, to just take the hearts of people away from God and try... Yeah, I, I think Satan's main objective is to try to get you to worship some other false god. And, and to give, give a piece of your heart to a, to a false god. And, and Satan has been doing that throughout history. Putting false gods in place of the one true God. What do we call that sin? Idolatry. That is correct. We call that idolatry. Now, you know, if you're taking notes, uh, here's, here's kind of a, a key thought. I didn't give you a bunch to write down today, so uh, you really only have one page there. But uh, if you're taking notes, let me get this. Not going to go. So to a uh, key thought for today, and, and that's, that's just this, that false gods promise what only the true God provides. False God promise, prom, false God's promise, what only the true God can provide. For example, well, let's, let's take a, a false God here in the United States. It's you know very popular. That'd be money. So, you know, if if you know, money money's really popular. I mean, what what is what does money do? Money promises to do for you what only God can provide. Okay? Money says, if I have enough money, I'll be secure. I'll be happy if I just have enough money. That's what people believe about the false god of money. But the reality is. Someone says, oh, wow, I have lots of money, and the doctor says, you have cancer, and you're not going to live. Yeah, you're going to die in 30 days. You realize, it doesn't matter how much money I have, it's not going to do me any good. And, and yeah, it, it doesn't make you secure. It's a false promise. Money says you have enough, you know, you'll, you'll be happy. But it doesn't matter how much money you have, if, if one day you find that you've lost one of your children, there's no amount of money that can buy your happiness in that moment. It's a false promise. It's a false God. It promises something it cannot provide. In the time of Elijah, there were many people there, they were living idolatrous lives. They were worshiping false gods. And, and, 
And in fact, it, if you missed last week, I, I just want to review, just, okay, <laughs> bring us up to speed. Uh, we, we, we looked, uh, I, I want to help us understand before we move forward. Elijah was called by God to confront a very evil king, and that king was named King Ahab, and he had a wicked, wicked wife, a woman named Jezebel. And Ahab was the 19th king out of 19 in a row who were evil, and, and Ahab was more evil than the first 18. So Scripture says he did more evil in the eyes of God than anyone before him, and he was the worst of the worst, and, and this long list of sins and wickedness, and, and, and he just did worse than anybody else had done, and he turned the people's hearts away from God. He turned them towards the false gods of Baal and Asherah. Baal, the sun god, or the fire god, and Asherah is kind of like Baal's wife, you know. And, and, and the people were no longer worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so instead, they're, they're worshiping these, these false gods. The false gods promised, if you worship me, I'll make your crops grow. If you worship me, you'll have a better life. If false gods promise what only the true God can provide. So God raises up Elijah. He confronts the king. He basically says, O oh, king, hey, because you are turning the people towards idolatry, because you are worshiping idols, God sent me to tell you it's not going to rain until God tells me to pray and ask for rain. So here they are. They're in a major drought. This is an agricultural economy, and, and tons of people are dying. It's just famine, 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 and the worst thing you can imagine. And so God sends Elijah into a period of hiding and preparation. Why? Well, because Ahab wanted Elijah dead. <laughs> he said to everybody, he said, if you find that guy, you kill him on the spot. So God takes Elijah to a place called the Kareth Ravine. And if you were here last week, Kareth means a place of cutting or cutting down. And, and it's, it's a place of humbling where God humbled him and, and God fed him morning and evening by ravens. And, and, and God provided a brook in the midst of a drought where Elijah could drink, and, and, but one day, God dried up the brook. No more brook. And so God called him to move on to a place known as Zarephath. And, and there he met this widow um, who God used to provide for him with just a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour, but uh, it never ran out. It never ran dry. And so one day, the widow's son died, and this, this growing man of faith... Uh, went, took the son in the upper room, called out to God, and raised the boy from the dead. And so we see this prophet is really developing into a great man of God. Uh, the, the, the man that God wanted him to become. Now, our, our last verse told us that he went into hiding. Uh, we find out that God wants him to go confront the evil king. So here's where we're going to pick up the story, okay? We're going to go to 1 Kings uh, 17 and uh, or 18 and uh, verses 17 through 18, and so there it says that uh, Ahab saw Elijah, and he said to Elijah, "Hey, buddy, is that you, the troubler of Israel?" Wow. Now, now let me just tell you a Hebrew word that translated troubler. Uh, that, that word, uh, you see in your notes there, it could be snake or viper or asp, okay? Is that you, <laughs> you snake? So snake or viper or asp, you no good low-down snake, he's saying, okay? It's your fault what's happening. All these people are dying with this huge drought because you, you, Elijah. And Elijah says, you know what, king? I, I'm not taking that from you. And so in, in verse 18, Elijah says, he says, no, 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 no. 
I've not made trouble for Israel. That's not it, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family, they've made trouble for Israel. Yeah, they have. And so you, you've abandoned the Lord's command. You have followed Baals. You know what he's saying to Ahab? He's saying, you committed idolatry. That, that's what you've done. You're committing the sin of idolatry. You're putting false gods ahead of the one true God. And Elijah was confronting the very popular idea that there are many gods. Now let me give you a couple words that we yeah, uh, studied uh, in, in, in Bible college, that they study in seminary. Uh, you may not know these words, but they're the words uh, monotheism, okay, and polytheism, okay? Now if you're taking notes, what, what's monotheism? Okay, it's a belief in one God, mono, you know, one God, okay? So as Christians, we are monotheistic in our beliefs. So what is polytheism? Okay, many, okay? Many, the belief that there are multiple gods. And so Elijah was confronting a very polytheistic culture where they could worship multiple gods. Now those of you who are Christians, you say, well, well we're monotheistic. We believe in one God. Even though we believe in one God, I, yeah, I don't want to be judgmental. I'm just telling you, I'm just reporting what I see. I believe many Christians live polytheistic lives. Most people I know aren't worshiping the false gods of Baal or Asherah. Most people I know are worshiping the false gods of today. But what are some of the false gods of today? I left you several blanks there, but there's a, yeah, what, what are socially acceptable gods today? Let's just be honest. You know, I already mentioned one, the god of money. I mean, where we live, you know, a lot of people worship money. That's just the way it is. Or people, they might worship the false god of material possessions. You know, your house, your car, those kind of things. Some people worship the false god of image. How I look. You know, it's, it's about how I look. Uh, maybe... It could, I mean, people worship sports, right? Maybe it's your sport or whatever. Some people, are, their God is their career. And that's, you know, that's what they worship. For some people, it's their hobby. Just their, their hobby becomes a God. You know, oddly enough, in the United States, what I've seen lately, a, a lot of people worship their children. And they say, well, how in the world can our children be a false god? If you elevate anything or anyone into the rightful place of the one true God and put them on your throne of your life beside God, that is idolatry even something as good and important as your children. So that's why I would ask the question of you today to identify if there are gods in your life. What false gods do you serve? What are the false gods that you put ahead of the one true God? And yeah, I, I just tell you, you know, some that I've, I've had in my life. Uh, I mean, not that I'm proud of it, but one is, it's just, I mean, it's kind of obvious at a lot of, several seasons in my life, I've made the church my God. Okay, now I'm, I'm called to, you know, the church to, to minister, and so obviously, you know, I, that, that's something that, that I need to do, but when it becomes the most important thing in my life, uh, I mean, if the church is number one, even above God, 
I might do it in the name of God, but then it becomes my God. Grow the church. Serve the church. If, if that's what it's all about, then it becomes an idol in my life. Another thing, very honestly, you know, uh, there, there were times in my life where maybe my family was, was, was my idol, my God. You know, I, I need to love my wife and my kids, but the truth is, if I have put them at number one most important place in my life, then they become a false God. Another false god for me is kind of what I call the promise of future security. And I, I you know, if, if I'd just save enough, if I could just save enough money, one day somewhere out there in the future, I'll have this secure thing, and I won't need anything but that. It's a false god. It's a false god of future security. To be honest, you know, let me, let me just ask you this question. What are some of the false gods you have elevated and erected in the place of the one true God? We're talking about the sin of idolatry, folks. Uh, sure, we're, we're monotheistic in our beliefs, but sometimes we can be very polytheistic in our practices, in our living. I mean, where is our trust? And so Elijah, the prophet, he steps into this polytheistic culture. He makes a very prophetic, a very strong statement. And if you're taking notes, I can come, su summarize this story in just one message. He looks at them as they're going back and forth, and he says with the authority of God, people, it's time to quit wavering. Quit wavering between gods. Quit going back and forth. It's time to quit wavering. So, so what he does, he basically says, we're going to have, now this was before the OK Corral. Okay. We're going to have a good old-fashioned showdown. That's what we're going to do. And so watch what he says. Uh, in in 1 Kings, in, in verse 19 tw through 21, he says this. He says, King, now summon people from all over Israel. We're going to meet up on Mount Carmel and bring 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Now, that's one honking big table. <laughs> just want to say that. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Yeah. We want the 400 prophets who eat at Jezebel's table. You ever think what that table looks like? I mean, wow, you know. I'd beat any smorgie in town here, I think. So, so anyway, that's, it just, it just kind of caught my eye. So, I, so Ahab sent word throughout all of Israel. He assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Verse 21 Here's where Elijah, Elijah gets in the people's face now. He says, uh, <laughs> Elijah went before the people. He asked this piercing question. What did he ask? He said, how long will you waver between two opinions? How long will you waver? And then he says, you can help me out here if you want to. He says, if the Lord is God, what do you do if the Lord is God? Follow him. Okay. But if Baal is God, what do you do if Baal is God? Follow him, okay? But the people said nothing. And so he steps in, he says, How long are you going to do this, people? Come on. If God is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. Make a choice. And I can guarantee you, if Elijah were here Today, he'd say the same thing. Quit wavering. I mean, you, you want, you, yeah, well, well God, uh, keep me out of hell. God, just get me into heaven. But I still want to do whatever I want. Oh, God, hear my prayer. Bless me. But don't make me obey your commands. Oh, God, I want the good things. But 
Do I have to stop the bad things? Oh, God, I quit wavering. Quit being a Christian on Sunday and a heathen on Monday. Quit claiming Christ and living like you don't know Him. Quit wanting the benefits and being unwilling to sacrifice. Just quit wavering. Please make a decision. Take a side. In fact, I'm trying to conceptualize what Elijah's message would look like us, you know, to us today. Because obviously it would be quite different. Here's what I think, honestly, he would say. He, he's not going to say, hey, if Baal's God, you go, Baal? I don't know any Baal, you know. So, so when you read the scripture, you need to, you know, plug it into to, to today, okay? So let's, let's, let's plug it into today. Uh, here's what I think he'd say. If your false God, little g, okay, your false God, whatever it is, really is God, big G, okay, then why don't you just sell out to it? Quit wavering. Just sell out to it, okay? In other words, hey, it's material possessions. That's the most important thing in my life. Then get, get to accumulating them. I mean, go after it with everything. Just, just start going for it. I mean, get into massive debt. Steal if you have to. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm not joking. That's, you know, because if the greatest thing is accumulation, then everything should be justified to accumulate, whether it's stealing or robbing, you know, whatever it would be. And, and don't ever give, you know, for heaven's sake, don't ever give anything again. Don't do anything generous because that would diminish your God, your accumulation. If material possessions are really your God, then go for it. Hey, let me, you know, if, if image, if, if that's your God, then, then don't just kind of play around with it and go to the gym for 20 minutes a day. No. I mean, if that's your God, then, then give yourself to it. I mean, go to the gym for three hours a day. Hire a plastic surgeon. Uh, some of you are going, oh, yeah, baby, I'm there. You know, so, uh, you know, tuck it, lift it, twist it, you know, curl, curl it, color it, funk it, you know, what? And, and I, I mean, you know, whatever you do, I mean, quit playing with your God. Quit just playing gym, you know. Go for all of it and, and just... Ignore the fact that you're going to die. Don't even think about that, because that would totally disqualify the God of appearance. <laughs> you know, buy clothes, whatever you need. You know, just, I mean, go for it. Uh, well, yeah, that's not my God. Well, maybe your God is sexual pleasure. If that's your God, hey, go for it. You know, boom. Don't let something as small as marriage hold you back. Uh, I mean, if, if you're not married, you know, I guess, you know, more power to you. If you are married, you know, you're not satisfied, whatever, you know, just step outside of your marriage. I mean, if, if you like to play both sides of the street, I mean, who am I to judge? Go for it if that's your God. Go for it. Is your house, is your house your God? You know, quit just doing one little room at a time. I mean, just go into massive debt. Let's redo the whole thing. Let's get new landscaping. Let's, you know, let's, let's just really do it upright. Yeah. Hire the best. But, but, if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the one true God, then quit your wavering. Serve Him with all of your heart. Don't claim Him and then act like He doesn't exist. Serve Him. And I can just feel the power of Elijah looking directly at me and saying, Hey, Jim, quit wavering. And, and here I'm saying to you, the church, Quit wavering. How long will you waver between two opinions? 
So what did he do? Oh, he has the showdown. Yeah. And he goes, hey, get, get, get two bulls for me and one bull for you and one bull for me. You know, let's just bring a couple bulls up here. Well, you know, you can, you can have one. I'll take the other one. We're, we're going to build a couple altars here. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to sacrifice on these altars. And we're going to call on your God, little g, and, and, and then, you know, and, and then we'll call on God, big G, and we'll see who really is God. And, and so we'll pick up the story and see what happens. Verse 24, you call on the name of, hmm? you call on the name of your God, and, and I'll call on the name of the Lord, and, and the one who answers by Fire? This, this is interesting, okay, if you know what's going on here. The one who answered by fire. And, and the one who answers by fire, well, that'll be the God. And then all the people said, oh, wow, Elijah, hey, that's pretty neat. What you say is good. And you know what? If you know what's going on there, here's what they're thinking. They're thinking, you're an idiot. Were you born stupid? I mean, that's what they're thinking, because Baal is the sun god who has fire. Who is it who has fire? The sun god. I mean, that's the one with the fire. I mean, hot fire. Elijah, you're getting smoked. Yeah, that's what's going to happen here. And so he goes on with this deal. And in verse 26, it says, So they took the bull, they prepared it, and all the prophets, they prepared it, and, and then they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, and they're dancing around, and they're doing their dance, and, oh, Baal, you know, answer us. And, and, and they, they shouted, but the Bible says there was what? No response. There was, there, was, there was no response. No one answered. And so they danced around the altar that they had made. Now, I did a little research on the dance. I'd do it for you, but you might not come back, okay? So, I mean, this was, this was really a dance. I mean, we're talking jumping up and down, full body jumping up and down. I mean, you know, watch the Maasai, you know, and, you know, this, this is, yeah, yeah, they, they, they're doing it all, and they're twisting around, and my back won't take that. And, and there's shouts of joy and, and shrieks to their false god, and nothing happens, and and nobody dances like that today, I don't think. But, but anyway, um, it, it, unless you're at a young concert, then you can, yeah. But, but maybe HGTV or something. So, and, and you know, they're going, hoo ha, hoo ha, hoo ha, and I worship you. And, you know, and, well, if you're at a sports event, maybe. Okay. And, you know, I have to be honest. I, if, if, I, if I get to go, if I would have been at that game yesterday, you know, I'm an Oregon Duck fan, you know, and they, they just beat number three yesterday at their home, you know. So if, if I would have been there, you know, I'd probably, I would have loved to have been in the front row. Uh, I wouldn't be the guy with my shirt off and my painted fat belly. But, uh, you know, those guys who've never played football before, but, you know, they're, they're right there telling the coach what to do, you know. I, I mean, it's worship. And it's the most important thing, Ooh, ah, you know, and, and and that's what these guys are doing. I don't know if you ever watch it. I mean, these these guys they get after it, you know. I, I I watch a lot of golf and they don't let them do that, but you know, in college football they do. So, you know, and, and so they're they're doing all this dance and you know it's a cheering crowd and all this stuff. Bail, send fire, bail, send fire, and and so I just love this. Yeah, it it been going on you know all day. I mean, it's this is going on for hours. And this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, I have to say. Maybe it's the meanness in me. I don't know. I probably should pray for forgiveness from that. But, but it is just so funny. This, this man of God, he, he's going to start messing with them. I, I mean, man, you know, he's, you know. And, and so he, here, here's what he does. Verse 27, he says, At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Why don't you shout a little louder? You know, and I think your, your, your God needs an audiologist. Uh, I don't think he can hear you, okay? Uh, surely, I mean, he's a God. Isn't he a God? 
Perhaps he's deep in thought. Oh, maybe he's busy. Oh, he might have gone on a traveling. You know, maybe he's on vacation. Oh, oh. hey, guys, I know what it is. He's sleeping. Somebody needs to go wake him up. What's he doing? I mean, he's just messing with him. <laughs> so, he's messing around. I know he's a god, but maybe he's on vacation. He's taking a little siesta. He's, yeah, he's having his milk and cookies as soon as he's done with that, you know, and then his little nap. You know, maybe, maybe he'll come around. Uh, <laughs> now, here's what's really funnier than fire. Okay, when it says maybe he's busy, I, I have to tell you, you know, uh, what, what it really means there in Hebrew. I mean, I, I did study Hebrew in my dreams once, but I, I had to look this up, okay? Uh, and, and I'm not making this up. This is the truth, okay? Matter of fact, if you get some versions that are literal versions, they actually have this in there. What he's saying is, maybe he's going to the bathroom. That's what the real language is here. Maybe he's on the potty. Okay, that's the most literal translation. He's busy relieving himself. Now, I, I'm just picturing this. Yeah. You have Elijah, the man of God, and he's like going, shout louder. And I can just hear him say, you know, he's, he's talking to himself. You know, he says, Elijah, keep a straight face, please. <laughs> don't, don't start laughing. You won't be able to get through this. Yeah, you know, just I mean, maybe, maybe he's on vacation. You know? <laughs> Guys, you know, I, I don't know. You know, maybe he's on the John. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't laugh, Elijah. You know, yeah. And where is your God? Uh, maybe get him to put down the newspaper, okay? So if you read on verses 28 through 20 through 35, what they do? They, they shouted louder. They danced around. They went crazy. They started to cut themselves because that's what they did. And, and Scripture says they shouted all day long. Sadly, though many of us don't shout and dance for Baal all day long, there are many of us who shout and dance for false gods all life long. Dancing, praising, pursuing, serving, worshiping the false gods that promise but never deliver all life long. So finally, at the end of the day, they dance, they cut themselves, nothing happens. Elijah does this, 1 Kings 18, 36. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward. What did he do? The Bible says... He prayed. He prayed. He didn't dance. He didn't shout. He didn't cut himself. He didn't do a whole bunch of gyrations to get God's attention. He prayed. And next week we're going to look at the faith and the prayer life of this awesome man in a little more detail. But, but he just prayed here. He said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that these people will know, O Lord, that you are God and that you are, what? Turning their hearts back again. Oh, wow. Can you just see the power and the beauty in that prayer? I, I mean, answer me, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself. Show us who you are. Let us see you. Reveal yourself by fire. May we feel the heat of your love. Show us who you are. Why? So that these people's hearts will be turned back to you again. They used to worship you. They used to know you. They used to serve you. They, they used to worship you, but these false gods have taken your place, O oh God. Turn their hearts back again. And as I read that, I just feel so much passion for, 
for many of you, you know, here, here and online, if you're, you know, uh, when, you know, maybe, maybe you just had a, a strong, faithful walk with God, but it's just, not, it's just not that strong, it's just not that faithful now, because there's a false God or a combination of false gods who are really on the throne of your life, and so maybe today God is trying to reveal Himself to you. Why? Because He loves you. Turn your heart back to Him. Turn your attention back to Him. To come back to Him. And that's why you're here. That's why you're listening online. Because God has been working in your life. Why? So He can turn your heart back to Him. That's why you're hearing this. Turn your heart back to Him. Whoever is God, reveal yourself by fire. Now, if you know anything about fire, fire's hot, very hot. I grew up, you know, I played with fire. I like to play with fire. You just get in trouble. Hey, you got to burn the house. You got to burn the house down. You got to burn something. You know, it's, you know uh, don't don't play with fire. I remember one time. You ever anybody ever know, here know what a chicken singer looks like? You know, <laughs> it's a little tube of gas, and it has a spout out the end. That it kind of it kind of looks like a a miniature uh, blowtorch. You know. <laughs> I couldn't get mine to light one day, supposed to be singeing the chickens. So I looked at it and I click and, you know, wow, I never had a hair in that spot of my eyebrow again. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, one day, I, I don't know how I figured this out. Maybe I shouldn't tell this. Kids, if you're listening online, don't listen anymore, okay? Uh, you know that, that powdered creamer that comes in the little cups? That stuff is very flammable. You light a match, and you pour that, poof, you know? I mean, it's, now, so what would someone who loves to play with fire do? <laughs> well, if one does that, what are ten going to do, you know? And so you get a cup, don't you? And, you? and you put about ten of them in a cup, and you get your friends around, and you go, watch this. I'm an idiot. And, and you strike a match, and you... Pfft. If what happened then happened today, I wouldn't have to shave for a month or so. And I'd go, you know, with, around with no eyebrows, no nose hairs, you know. You probably didn't, yeah, because you get older, you know, those kind of things happen. So, you know, but I mean, I remember I had one of my clients one time who, he always had a big beard, and he had a you know, a Donnie haircut, you know, just uh, around here, nothing on top. And uh, he came in one day, he'd shaved everything off. I was just, you know, cue ball. Uh, I said to him, I said, Dennis, you look like you rear-ended a truckload of air. You know? <laughs> and so, uh, he, was, he was just so, you know, so that's, that's what I would look like today if I, if I did this kind of thing here. So, uh, anyway, I feel better now that I told you about that, so... How does God reveal himself by fire? He prays. Whoever is a God, reveal yourself by fire. And in verse 38, what happens? He prays, and then the fire of the Lord. Whoosh. I mean, just imagine this. Just imagine a lightning rod of fire coming from heaven. And it fell, and here's what Scripture says. It burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, the water all around it uh, that the false prophets had poured on it. It licked up the water, and when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord is our God. The Lord is our God. Yes. You know what? That would be my prayer for us in this church for this very congregation that we would so see God for who he is that all false gods would fall away in comparison of the one true God and our hearts would be firmly steadfast onto the one true God and we would say no more wavering no more wavering the Lord he is God the Lord, He is God. And I'll be honest, you know, the first time I read this, I thought to myself, well, 
Well, duh, you know, if you sent a fireball from heaven, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And I mean, like, you know, God, if you're really, if you're really there, you know, burn this baby up, whoosh, you know. And, oh, yeah, you're God, you know, I can believe that. Why doesn't God do that today? Why doesn't he show himself like that today? And at the same time, I'm kind of asking that question. I realize in so much of an infinitely more beautiful way just how God showed himself to us 2,000 years ago when he left heaven. He became one of us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. He lived a perfect and sinless life so that he could die on a cross for us and be raised again so that we might know him. And when you know him through Christ, the fire falls from heaven and the false gods fade away. So if Elijah were living today, I think he'd say, Jim, quit wavering. If you know God for who he is, you will never be tempted to serve these false gods because the one true God is so much greater. So much greater. Amen. I want us all to pray together. You just bow your heads. God, we ask that you would pierce us with that question, that we would be humbled and in a spirit of repentance, we would dethrone all the idols that are standing in place of where you want us to be. Just as you remain in an attitude for prayer, prayer for just a, just a moment here, everyone here and if you're online, just take a, a moment and, and just reflect in prayer. I just, I just want to ask you as, you, as you're reflecting in your own mind there in an attitude of prayer, is there a place you're wavering? Do you have false idols in that place? I know, I know I've struggled with this, and I've been convicted and repentant. And, and if that's you today, if you'd say quite honestly, yes, there are things in my life that have a tendency to push out God and don't give honor to God, and I want to repent of the sin of idolatry. I want to quit wavering. I just want to serve Him wholeheartedly. Just whatever that is, I, I want you, as you're, as you're just bowed in prayer right now, give it a name. Name it, okay? Okay, if you've given it a name right now, just, just on your own, just, just say this, God, I confess this to you, forgive me, whatever it is. God, I confess it to you, forgive me. And if that's you today, if that's you today, as we're in prayer, would you just lift up your hands and say, man, I'm in, I'm repentant of this sin, yes. yes thank you, thank you, thank you, yes. Yes, those of you today. God, we just humbly pray. I ask that you would draw us to yourself. And God, we will commit to pursue you. And, and it, we will commit to know you. That we help us to be broken of the sin of idolatry. I pray you would give us eyes to see all the different areas of our life where this sin that, that breaks your heart is a reality. And, and we confess those sins to you and ask you to cleanse us, God. We recognize we don't have the ability to overcome the sin of idolatry ourselves, God, but we ask that you would just be so great. God, you've revealed yourself by fire before. I pray that you just reveal yourself by the fire of your Holy Spirit, that, that you would become so real to us now that we would worship and love and serve you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength as we give ourselves holy and totally unto you, the one true God. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Have a great week. Thank you.